Hi, I'm Sean Rivet with St. Joseph Catholic Church here in Marion, Iowa. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the liturgy and the liturgical year. I'm bringing in our liturgist, Patty Kelly, who's going to give us a little presentation, and then I'll come back with you in just a few moments to share a little bit more with you. So here's Patty. The liturgical year. Liturgy is not how we see God, but how God sees us. What is liturgy? In the Old Testament, liturgy meant public work, service in the name of the people, work of God. In the New Testament, liturgy means a celebration of divine worship, proclamation of the gospel, active charity. Liturgy is the work of the people. Liturgy is faith of the church in motion, performed by the mystical body of Christ. That's us. So, liturgy is working, it's action, it's movement, it's going forth and moving forward because we are the church, the people of God. Mass is a liturgy focused on word and Eucharist. The liturgy of the word precedes Eucharist. So we have our first reading, our psalm, and during our Sunday liturgy, we have our second reading, and then we always have the gospel. The word and Eucharist form a single act of worship. So these two distinct parts of the Mass are creating one single act of worship. The Mass is like a single diamond with five different facets to it. We have the facet of thanksgiving. Eucharist is a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God our Father. The Church expresses gratitude to God for all the wonderful gifts, especially the gift of His Son, Jesus. We have fellowship. We're gathering together in unity as one family to praise and worship God. We're making memorial. We're remembering Jesus and His great sacrifice that He made for us. Eucharist is sacrifice sacrifice offered for the faithful departed as well as inviting all of the angels and saints into the Eucharistic prayer. We're celebrating the great mystery of God becoming man in the form of Jesus, one liturgy in heaven and on earth. So we're together celebrating that. So we have this sense of timelessness when we go to Mass. There is all reality present at once. When we walk into the Mass, we leave earthly time behind, and we are temporarily stepping into a timelessness eternity. God allows us to be with the divine, to step into the Paschal mystery, and ponder the great love that God has for us in His Son, Jesus. So the human and divine are co-mingled. It's really awesome when you think about that, because where else in this world can you have that sense of being with heaven? So the man is such a great gift for us. Celebrating the liturgical year. The liturgy cycle is the ring of the bride of Christ. Reality of salvation is so huge that we must unfold it over the course of a year. The realization of a God that loves us enough to ask his son to die for our sins is monumental. We must carefully look at and appreciate what this means in our life. The liturgical year starts with Advent. The scriptures remind us of the event to come. Advent is my favorite liturgical season. I think it's the anticipation and the excitement about waiting for Christmas, and it's a very reflective time. The liturgical colors for Advent are lavender or purple, and our one Sunday, Gaudate Sunday, is pink, which means that we're getting close. We're almost there. It's rejoicing. Advent ends when we have Christmas, and Christmas, of course, is celebrating the birthday of Jesus. January 1st, we celebrate the Solemnity of Mary, and then we celebrate Epiphany 12 days after Christmas, or whatever the Sunday is closest to that 12 days, and we celebrate the, when the three wise men came to bring Jesus the gifts. The Sunday after Epiphany Sunday is the baptism of Jesus. So we're recalling when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by his cousin, John the Baptist. The Sunday after we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, we go into what's called ordinary time. This is the time for growth, a time for us to become more spiritually mature. Think of a seed that's under the ground, dormant, that's preparing to grow. Ordinary time is ordinal or counted time. All of the Sundays are numbered. 
Ash Wednesday begins Lent. We're called to fast on this day and a way of entering into the season of Lent. We get ashes as a reminder that we are made from the earth and will return to the earth. Lent is another special time of our liturgical year. Forty days of repentance and reflection. We surrender ourselves. We're called to conversion. We're called to prayer and fasting on Fridays to give up meat. These are sacrifices that we make in order to live along with Jesus at the great sacrifice he made of his life for us. After 40 days of Lent, we enter into Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday. This is when we celebrate Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Matthew's Gospel tells us that the whole city was shaken and people were asking, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Thursday of Holy Week starts the Triduum. This is the three days that we recall the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Holy Thursday, we recall the Last Supper in the upper room with his disciples. On Friday, we recall his passion, his suffering, the scourging at the pillar, the crowning of thorns, walking the roads to his crucifixion. We remember his death. Holy Saturday, we recall him being in the tomb, and Easter vigil reflects this in the liturgy. The Easter Vigil is a very unique liturgy. There is no other liturgy like it in the liturgical year. Three features of Easter Vigil are the blessing of new fire, the lighting and blessing of the Paschal candle, which is a new candle each year, and the baptism of catechumens. The Paschal candle is used at all funerals during the liturgical year. This is to remind us that we are in death with Jesus as we are with him in the resurrection of life. Easter is one of the great highlights of our liturgical year. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. There are 50 days between Easter and Pentecost in the Easter season. Forty days after Easter, we celebrate the ascension of the Lord. The disciples saw Jesus leave the earth, and he left them with a promise that he would send his advocate, the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is the celebration of the Holy Spirit descending upon the disciples. This is 50 days after Easter. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Holy Trinity Sunday and Corpus Christi Sunday follow Pentecost. Holy Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the three in one. Corpus Christi Sunday celebrates the body and blood of Jesus Christ. After Corpus Christi, we're back again into ordinary time. If we look closely, we will be able to find God in the ordinary of our lives. In the liturgical year, we have holy days in which Mother Church asks us to attend Mass. It is the tradition and the belief of the Church that Mary was assumed into heaven so that her body would not undergo decay. All Saints Day on November 1st honors all of our saints and their wonderful examples to lead us to Jesus. The Liturgy of the Hours The early church wanted more devotion than just the liturgy of the Mass, so they found another way that they could be shaped by the Word, another way of being together in community. The liturgy of the hours can be celebrated in the morning, midday, mid-afternoon, and evening. The Feast of Christ the King is our last Sunday of the liturgical year. We celebrate Jesus as the King of the world and the King of the universe. Our liturgical year ends, and a new one begins the first Sunday of Advent. So when we come to Mass, when we think of the liturgy, we really need to come with a communal mind. It's not just we're individual little cells there at Mass. We're connected with everybody. When I come to Mass, I like to pray and really try to hear my voice blending with everyone else's voice. And collectively, we have our own voice as a community, a community voice. So we want to we want to unite ourselves in prayer with others. That's an important component of the liturgy. It is our coming together to worship God as a people, and he wants us to be connected as a people. That's why when Jesus taught us how to pray, he taught us to pray communally, communally. Think about it. Our Father who art in heaven. It doesn't it doesn't start my Father in heaven. It's our Father. So Even with that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, Jesus wants us to think communally in our prayers. Now, the liturgy is throughout the year, as we said, and the high point for 
followers of Jesus is Easter. The, the litur liturgical year, I have a liturgical calendar here. I have one for all of the people that are in RCI. Here's, uh, this was shown in the slideshow there. And the, the biggest point here, purple and gold, if you want to call it those two colors, this is Lent and then Easter. And you can see the, this is the biggest buildup and the biggest celebration throughout the year. And it, and it concludes with Pentecost. Then we have Ordinary Time. Then we have Advent and Christmas. Now, we as a church started with the high point being Easter. Everything culminates and revolves around Easter. We're an Easter people. And in fact, every single Sunday is a continuation of Easter. That's why even in Lent, when it's 40 days of fasting, technically speaking, you don't have to observe the fast on Sundays of Lent because it is a celebration of Easter, technically. But um, I personally, for spiritual reasons, feel like it's better to hang in there and keep your Lenten observance, your sacrifice that you're offering to the Lord, uh, even on Sunday in Advent. I mean, in Lent. So we're an Easter people. We're called to worship God as a community. We do that in the lit liturgy, and we, we have this liturgical year. Our whole life becomes an intertwined existence with God. Our whole life revolves around the saving work of Jesus, and we live that out through the liturgical year once again, and throughout the year we celebrate the saints who have gone before us in the church, and um, we do that on all the feast days throughout the year. So thank you so much for tuning in to this video on the liturgy and the liturgical year. Uh, stay tuned for the next video as well. Until then, take care and God bless.